Have you ever wondered what your pets really think about you? What do they do when you aren't around? Because these cute pets have a secret life of their own. In this neighborhood, every family has a pet. Each one of them has their own unique thoughts and stories. This is Katie's beloved dogs, Duke and Max. Duke loves playing with kids while Max is totally the opposite. He can't stand a kid for a second. Luckily, his owner is a single woman, so he doesn't have to deal with kids. But things suddenly took a turn when Katie started dating Chuck. They get along so well that Katie decides to marry Chuck. Max is fine with that because Chuck is a sweet guy and he also loves dogs. But just in a year, another member joins the family. Katie gives birth to a boy and names him Liam. It is fine at the start as Liam spends most of his time sleeping in the cradle. But then he started talking, then crawling and then walking all around the house. Max starts feeling unsafe in his own house and tries his best to keep a distance from Liam. But one day, a sweet gesture turned the tables. The little kid hugs Max and says, I love you. Max is so touched that he decides to always stay beside Liam and protect him. Together with Duke, Max helps Liam explore new things. They even teach him how to walk. Max still doesn't like kids in general, but Liam is different. He is special and Max can't let anything bad happen to him. But keeping him safe is like a full-time job. Beside Max, other pets also have their own problems. One of them is Molly's cute little rabbit named Snowball. She treats him like a little child. She washes him and dresses him up in new clothes every day. When Molly leaves for school, Snowball gets in charge. Because of his superhero costume, he believes that he is born to save the world. Snowball peeks outside to find his next mission and spots Max. He advises Max to prepare Liam for preschool as he is going to join it soon. Max is against that idea as he believes the world outside is too dangerous. Liam should stay safe at home with Max. Suddenly, Duke reaches there and says that Liam is not at home. Max panics and uses his walkie-talkie to communicate with other pets. Luckily, one of them finds Liam hanging out with his dad. Max calms down, but his habit of stressing out has caused him to scratch his neck uncontrollably. Katie notices that and takes him to an animal doctor. He puts a pet cone around Max's head to stop him from scratching, but it is really uncomfortable. Luckily, he gets some good news, which uplifts his mood. They are going on a trip. Before leaving, Max wants someone to look after his favorite toy, Busy Bee. He gets in the neighbor's house where a pampered cat named Chloe lives. He asks her to take care of his toy, but Chloe doesn't seem willing. Max gets to the next house and meets Gidget, who immediately agrees to take care of a busy bee with all her life. Afterwards, the dogs get in the car and enjoy hanging their heads outside the window. Meanwhile, Gidget is holding on the busy bee while daydreaming about living a romantic life with Max. Suddenly, the toy slips and falls outside. It rolls down and ends up at the creepy apartment of an old woman which is filled with deadly cats. Gidget doesn't dare to enter the apartment and decides to ask Chloe for help. The old woman loves cats, so Chloe helps Gidget to disguise as a cat, but only the costume will not be enough. She must learn how to behave like a cat. She can't fetch like a dog or be a clumsy idiot. She must be elegant, proud, and careless like a real cat, and learn to destroy her owner's belongings. Once Gidget is fully ready, she heads to the apartment to get back the busy bee. The old woman welcomes her in the house and Gidget starts looking for the busy bee. She spots it at a high spot and climbs up to get it. Unfortunately, it is being held by a big scary cat. Gidget tries snatching the toy, but the big cat gets enraged. Luckily, another pet named Norman reaches there to help Gidget. Norman uses a laser light to distract the cats, but the busy bee also falls down. It's time for plan B. Gidget pretends that she has grabbed and eaten the red dot created by the laser light. The cats drop their jaws as none of them ever succeeded in catching the red dot. They bow down to Gidget and call her the Queen of Cats. That's how Gidget gets back the busy bee and also becomes the leader of cats. In the other apartment, Snowball finally gets his first rescue mission. A dog named Daisy comes to ask for help. When she was riding the airplane, she noticed a tiger trapped in a cage. His owner was a cruel man who treated the tiger really harshly. Daisy wants Snowball to help her in rescuing the tiger. Snowball immediately agrees and heads out with Daisy. They have reached the amusement park to rescue the tiger. It is guarded by several scary circus wolves. One of them starts chasing after Snowball. Poor Rabbit is not as heroic as he believed. On the other side, Daisy is extremely brave and skilled. She saves Snowball, defeats all the wolves, and gets the key to unlock the tiger. The tiger is, of course, a wild animal and keeps destroying random things. Daisy cannot leave the tiger on the streets and begs Snowball to help find a new home for the tiger. Snowball gets back to his building and asks the oldest pet to take care of the tiger. Many puppies already live in this apartment and learn how to be a real dog. The tiger may fit in and become a regular pet. The caretaker believes that the tiger is too wild for this place, but he takes pity on him and lets the tiger stay for a night. The next morning, Snowball was practicing his fighting skills with combat games when the tiger was dropped back at Snowball's house. 
Snowball can't keep him, but he gets a naughty idea. As Max's apartment is empty, so Snowball hides the tiger over there. He believes that the problem is solved, but a bigger one is heading his way. The circus master has found Daisy's hairpin and gives it to his guard wolves. They memorize the smell and head out to find the tiger. Meanwhile, Max has finally reached their picnic spot, which is actually Katie's uncle's farm. Duke is really excited to meet new animals, but Max doesn't like the farm. Just in a few minutes after entering the farm, Max gets chased by a creepy turkey, but luckily he gets saved by a mysterious dog whose single woof silenced the whole farm. Later that night, Max tries to enjoy the trip by chasing the fireflies, but one of them gets inside his mouth. He unintentionally washes his mouth in the mysterious dog's bowl. He forgives him this time and introduces himself as Rooster. He advises Max to let Liam run around. If he gets hurt, he will learn not to make the same mistake again. But Max is way too protective about Liam. The uncle doesn't let the dogs inside the house, but Max keeps peeking through the window to assure that Liam is alright. Afterward, he heads to the forest for a walk but encounters several creepy animals. Max is a real coward and starts to panic. Suddenly a fox attacks him out of nowhere. Luckily Rooster reaches there in time and scares away the fox. He tells Max to stop being so naive. Rooster also removes the pet cone and advises Max to be more vigilant. The next morning, Liam brings a storybook he wants to read. Max and Duke can't read, but they help Liam understand the story from the pictures. It's the story of the Little Red Riding Hood. As soon as the picture of the wolf appears, Max closes the book so Liam doesn't get scared. He tries changing the story, but Rooster reaches there and tells that the wolf ate the little girl and the grandma. Max tells him not to scare the kid, but Rooster believes that Liam is not the one who is a coward. It's Max who easily gets scared of everything. Max is left speechless and follows Rooster to see how he handles all the farm animals. He can control all the cattle alone and guide them to their barn. Suddenly, a pig comes out and starts eating the vegetables. Duke suggests that they call Rooster, but Max believes that he can control the situation. Unfortunately, the attempt backfires and Max gets thrown down brutally. He accidentally breaks the fence and lets the sheep out. Rooster rushes there and guides the sheep back in, but a small one has already escaped into the wild. Rooster decides to get it back, but he orders Max to accompany him. They reach a high cliff and find the sheep stuck on a tree in a deadly spot. One wrong move and the sheep will fall down to death. The sheep's foot is stuck and Rooster is too big to step on the weak tree branch, so Max is the only one who can execute this rescue mission. He eventually accepts the fact that he is too afraid. Rooster tells him to keep his chin up. The first step of not being afraid is acting like you're not afraid. Max understands and steps forward to get the sheep. As soon as he gets on the tree, it breaks and starts hanging down, but Max doesn't move back and he proceeds to get the sheep. The tree falls down eventually, but Rooster pulls up Max and the sheep. This incident helps Max find his true self and come over his insecurities. He spends the night talking with Rooster and learns more about being brave. He even becomes able to howl. The next day, Max's owner decides to head back, so Rooster silently leaves his scarf for Max to tell him how much he cares. Max puts it around his neck and feels really proud. They head back home, but don't know that a tiger is living there. Daisy and Snowball try to take away the tiger quietly, but Max catches them. He starts scolding them for the reckless act, but Snowball explains that the tiger is really pitiful and needs their help. They peek out of the window and find that the wolves have already reached them. Max steps forward to handle them, but they are too many in number, and throw Max away in the basement. Snowball and Daisy take the tiger to the roof, but the circus master reaches there with his wolves. They surround the tiger and he is shot by the tranquilizer. The circus master takes away the tiger and Daisy as well. Max can't give up so easily and teams up with Snowball. They get in a toy car and rush after the circus van. Moreover, they contact the other pets and ask for their help. Gidget gathers her cat team and promises to help. The cats throw away all the cat food and ask their owner to get more food. As soon as she gets in the car, the cats take over and head towards the circus van. Meanwhile, the circus master gets on the train and tortures the poor tiger. Max and Snowball also grab on the train and start looking for their friends. Snowball spots Daisy stuck in a cannon, and he rushes to help her, while Max is chased by the wolves on the train roof. He isn't a coward anymore and faces the enemy bravely. He tricks the wolves to step on the poles and make them fall off the train. Meanwhile, Snowball is attacked by the circus monkey. Snowball uses the tricks he learned in the games and beats up the monkey. Then he gets Daisy out of the cannon and puts the monkey in her place. The monkey gets shot out of the train but accidentally hits Max. They fall off the train but Max doesn't give up. He takes the shortcut and waits on the top of the tunnel. As soon as the train passes by, Max jumps on it and bites the circus master. Snowball and Daisy join him too and the train is finally stopped. 
The circus master gets up again, but he is struck by the car driven by the cats. Gidget invites his friends inside the car and they head back home. A few days have passed and things are getting back to normal. The tiger is finally adopted by the old lady and he lives with the cats. Liam is finally ready to join preschool, but Max is going to be brave. And he will help Liam be brave so he can explore the big, scary, yet incredible world. Once you face your fears, you will not be afraid anymore. Everyone is scared at some point in their lives. Some give up while some step forward and make a difference.